For this video, I'm going to do another example just of trying out stuff with data. This is another data set that I have not seen yet. So again, we will see how it goes, but hopefully an example of taking some of the tools that we've been using in the R programming class up to this point and seeing how you can apply it with new data sets just to kind of explore and get a feel for them and get some basic exploratory data analysis done. So for this one, I'm going to use a data set that's part of Tidy Tuesday. Uh, we have a guest lecturer coming in, Nicole Nonhat, who's going to talk some about this data set. But it's a data set that gets put out um, every Tuesday, I believe. And then um, people around the world who, who work with R try to come up with the best um, visualizations that they can with it. So it can be a really ex good example to go in and see how people use different data sets to come up with different things. And a lot of times they're really beautiful or really incredible visualizations. We're just going to do a pretty basic look here, but um, they're great data sets to explore a little bit and try to practice your R skills on. So they're in GitHub. If you do R for data science, and then Tidy Tuesday. That'll take you to all of these data sets. Then you can go into data, and we'll go into 2020. And then there was a data set that was looking at Himalayan explorers. I think it's this 2020-09-22. Yep, that looks right. OK, so this has information on Himalayan climbing expeditions. And it comes from a database, so they describe the source and kind of how they, who cleaned this up and some pieces like that. Um, so let's come up and let's take a look at this data set that's about members. Because I think that's got some interesting information, like where they're, where they're from. Uh, so if we look at the raw data set here, we can see that we've got things like the expedition ID, a member ID, so I guess that's separate for every member. Uh, some information about the peak that they're climbing. I think that this might join up with some of the other data frames that they had. The peak name, the year, season, sex, age, citizenship, expedition role, if they were hired or not. Um, I'm guessing this is maybe as high as they got. If they had maybe success in reaching the peak. Uh, solo or not. If they used oxygen, if they died, if they did what the cause was, how high they were. Um, if they were injured, the injury type, the injury height. Okay, so we can bring this in. Let's copy this and then make sure you have tidyverse loaded. And then we can do read CSV because this is a CSV, right? We can see those separators. And then if you wanted to, you can download this data and bring it into your computer and read it locally, but I'm just going to read it directly from that. And then again, I'll... Um, I'll use paste zero just to clean this up a little bit so that we don't have it going way off the line. Oh. Let's break this up maybe here. We can do it again. Okay. So we can take a look. It looks like it's maybe pretty large, yeah, about 75,000 lines. And this seems to have read it in really nicely. OK, so we can save this now. Um, and maybe we'll just save it to the object members. And to get a first look at it, maybe we want to do just a summary function. All right, so based on this, we've got expedition ID, and those are different characters, and then we've got member ID. Um, we've got things like age. Evidently, there was somebody who was seven, um, but then most of them are kind of 20s through, through mid-40s. Um, and for a lot of people, this information, it looks like, is missing. We've got the year. Uh, we've got some information for sex and season. It looks like for some of these, we might want to change them into factors as we work with them. Um, citizenship, the expedition role, if they were hired or not. And then we've got some that are logical, like if they died, if they were injured. So I think an interesting first piece 
might be just to take a look at um, how many people tried to climb specific peaks in specific years. So let's look at this peak first. You can see that's the character right now, but if we wanted to, we could pull that out and then we could use the unique function to see what the unique values are there. Oh, <laughs> I should put in the column name. All right, so we've got like 300 of these. Um, so maybe we want to just filter down to those that are most common. So one way that we could do that is we could group by the peak name that we can count. So this gives us these counts and then we could arrange by that in descending order. All right, so we can see that these are our top few peaks here. We've got Everest and then some others that I am not as familiar with. But maybe we want to limit just to these. So let's see. We can take the numbers and we can filter for peak name. And OK, so let's put in Everest. And then we can put in um, a few more. All right, this should be enough to get some interesting stuff. So, all right, let's take a look at that. And now you can see that we're only pulling ones that are in these specific peaks. And then it might be interesting for us to pull out and see how the number of people who were climbing these different peaks by year changed. So we could group by, we'll group by the year, but we'll also group by the peak name because I like to get this information for separate peaks, I think. All right, so this just adds this grouping on, but now when we count, it will count up the number of observations, and since we've got one row per um, person in expedition, that should get us there. All right, so now this is something that we could pipe in maybe to a ggplot, and we could try doing year, so we're doing kind of a time series. And then the number, start with the GM point, and then I want to get this separately for each of those um, peaks. So let's take a look at that. And that gives us these kinds of time series. So based on that, a line might be interesting here. So that looks kind of cool. We might even want to try, I think it's the bar. I always have to remember, nope, it's the column because we want to use this N to show that. So we could even do kind of like um, these columns to show the number by year. And you can see there's certainly some that are more popular. Um, so Everest has by far the most. There's some where there's been this big kind of peak. So this this one, Manaslu, I guess there was a really big peak. Um, in maybe around 2010 or so. If we wanted to, we could potentially also group by the season. And then we could try to use season for color or for fill. So that's letting us see too that like for Everest, it's really dominated, especially in later years by this spring season. Whereas for this one, maybe this is in the Southern hemisphere, um, there's a lot more happening in the autumn and the same for this one. Although there is some range for both autumn and spring. Um, another thing that it might be interesting to look at might be um, to take the whole data set, let's look at it again. All right, so we've got this information about cause of death, and we've also got information about injury types. So that could be something interesting to look at and see kind of like what injuries are the most common or what causes of death are the most common. 
So to take a closer look at that, let's do um, let's do the injuries and then count those up. All right, and then we can do um, we can rearrange them. So a lot of these are missing. So maybe we want to go back and filter out um, so that we only have the ones where it's not missing for injury type before we do this analysis. Although that's something that you could explore too, especially by year. I would imagine that our information about what types of injuries there were is much more thorough for later years than it was for earlier years. Another thing that could be going on is these NAs might just be cases where somebody was not injured. So the, uh, we could try to sort those out by looking at the places where injured was true and it was still NA. In that case, they were injured, we just don't know what it was, versus places where injured was false. And so in those cases, they might just be using this missing as kind of a placeholder. But we can see that there are several causes that really dominate here. And we might want to create a kind of um, bar chart to show those. So after we do this count, so now that we've, we've done this filtering, we should have gotten rid of those NAs. We can check that. Yeah. All right. So once we've done this count, we could go through and we could do ggplot for this. All right. We'll do that x equals the n in this case and then y equals the injury type. We might need to do it the other way around and then flip the columns. Let a GM call. No, that seemed to work fine. Okay. So this is giving us the different types and right now it's alphabetical. So we've got AMS first and then avalanche and then crevasse and so on. But we might wanna do these so that they're in order. So we could go through and where we do this injury type right here, we could use the factor reorder from four cats and actually do that in order of N. We might need to see, we might wanna do descending instead. No, that looks pretty good. So now we go down and we can really easily read um, all of that information. And then we might wanna change our labels too. So we could say that the X label is number of injuries. And then the Y, we could just leave blank if we wanted. All right, so that works out pretty well on that. We could also, if we wanted to, when we group by up here, we could add some other elements if we wanted to kind of explore them. Um, and that way when we count, it'll carry through and it'll allow us to plot when we get down. So let's see, maybe we wanna do citizenship. There might be too many of those to really see, but in that case, we could filter some. All right, so if we do this group by citizenship, then when we come down and do ggplot, we can add on and we can do, X and Y, but then we could also do fill. It might be taking a while because there are lots of colors. Yes, so in this case, we've got maybe way too many colors because we can see that all coming through. Uh, so let's just explore and see what are the most common citizenships, then maybe we can filter down to just a few. So, um, Let's do a group by citizenship. And we'll also do this filter. So we're just looking to see the most common citizens among those who are injured. And then we'll do a count. And then let's get it in order. Oh. Or we could actually, we could do top N where we do that the weight uh, so we'll do maybe like the top five, and then the weight is based on that N. Okay, so here are top five, and we're doing some ties. Let's do a lower number. Oh, wait, I need to ungroup. There we go. We can get back to five now. Because I hadn't ungrouped, it was doing the top five within each country. Um, and so, of course, there was only one number for the count for each country, so we were getting the same number return. 
So here are our top five. We can maybe put that in if we wanted. And again, this is not for every expedition member. It's only for cases where there was an injury. All right, so we're going to check to see if it's one of a set. So we'll check for Japan, Nepal, Spain, the UK, and the USA. All right, so now this is getting low enough that we can kind of explore that a little bit more. And uh, just from a first glance here, it looks like for avalanches, that is kind of different across countries. And some of this might be related to that higher, not higher, because I, I would imagine that um, more of the, the, the people who are hired on expeditions are coming from Nepal compared to these other countries that are further away from the Himalayas. Um, so that is dominated in that case. But as we look across the others, maybe there aren't terribly strong patterns with certain causes um, having different patterns by, by citizenship. So I guess the other thing that we could look at here, since it raised that interesting question, is whether they were hired or not. So we'll bring this down because we want to do something similar here. But we'll take out the citizenship piece. And if we check the members, I think there was that like hired or not. Uh, yeah, so there's this column called hired that's already logical. So we could group by injury type instead of citizenship. Let's group by hired. And then let's use that for the fill. So we can see if some of these injuries are differential in those two groups. And we can see, yeah, maybe they are, especially for avalanche, where um, a really almost half are, are people who are hired, whereas for a lot of the other injuries, it's really a much higher proportion of people who are not hired on the expedition compared to those who were.